welcome back uh, today I'm going to be having a look at trying to identify some watermarks um, the stamps in question um, I previously showed on the channel when they came through the through the post these are some pre-decimal British postage due stamps now there are two designs of these um, up until 1970 now as you can see we've got the higher values there on the left with to pay and they've got two and six there and a five shilling and there's a couple of higher values there which I've managed to identify because they only exist um, under one monarch in one set whereas the others um, the same designs are used from all the way back in 1914 all the way through to 1969 um, so the only way to tell which set these apply to are by identifying the watermarks because a lot of the same colours and same designs are used for several different monarchs so yeah I've photocopied the page out of my uh, catalogue here rather than just have my catalogue trying to stay open on the right page um, I may have to refer to the catalogue um, to just double check what the watermarks are it does describe them but it doesn't give any pictures on here I'd have to cross reference those with the watermark images so without further ado let's um we've got the watermark tray here we've got the stamps here and i've got the ronsonol lighter fluid here so i'm going to give this a whirl and see how we get on so i'll put a nice thin layer of uh, the lighter fluid in there i'm going to start with the lower values um, so this is a, a halfpenny emerald design now these stamps aren't in the greatest condition some of them have got um, hinge remnants on the back so it may impede being able to read the watermarks I'm not sure no they're not coming off so right well that one's a bit of a duff duff one so far I can't see any watermark on that just wondering if that could be one without a watermark on it Fact, I've cropped a bit of the page there, I'd have to have a look what that was, but no, I can't see. Let me get my uh, magnifying glass. No, there's definitely something there, but that hinge certainly doesn't help. Yeah, I'd have to file that under unknown for the time being, I'm afraid. So I'll put that up there. Let's have a look at the next one, see if we get any better result. So I'll place that in the fluid there. And all I'm really seeing is the text on the stamp sort of coming through from the other side. I'm not really seeing a watermark. So again, unsure on that one. So let's try again. This is another penny stamp. 
was hoping for slightly better results than this but uh, not to be again there's something you can kind of see something there but not the clearest of uh, images no and they're just now reflecting off the camera so try another one I think that's got a bit of the envelope still stuck to the back of the stamp so that's a potential fail as well Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That doesn't appear to work either. Ah, finally. I've got a George the Sixth. So we've got a George the Sixth one now, which is the GVR sideways. And there's only one set of those, so that can only be one particular stamp. So if we have a look at what the value is on that on the front. That's the one and a... One and a half penny. So that is... George the six sideways one and a half. Is it one and a half? Yeah, three, three halfpenny. So that's a bit of an odd one because it's saying there isn't a. You can see the watermark there. The G, V, I, R. So the three halfpenny was a GVR. But I would say that looks more like a GVIR. Ah, oh, there is, yeah, sorry, my apologies, there's a three halfpenny green. So that is D37. Yeah, sorry about that, that's me just being a, a fool. So that's D37, so I'm just going to get one of my sheets here where I'm storing these uh, So D37 so right, that's that one identified. So I'll let that one dry out. So now I put it in there, and I've written the Stanley Gibbons catalogue number underneath there. So. Let's now uh, crack on with the next one. Oh, that's a nice uh, tuppence there with hardly any uh, 
cancel your mark on it and we need some more fluid so let's uh, apply some fluid right I can see the watermarks appearing on that one and that looks like I think that's the Tudor crown you can see there get any leverage on the actual stamp here uh, but yeah that appears to be I'm trying to get uh, there we go you can probably see the crown there that's the Tudor crown so that's the top and with the Tudor crown, which will be one of the Queen Elizabeth Tudor crown, top and agate, blimey, that's got a catalogue value of £23, and that's D41. So I'll put that a bit further over here, D41, and uh, Excellent. So that's two identified. I'm going to have to come back to those others, I think, another time. So let's move on. We've now got a thruppany in a kind of brown colour. So I can see that looks particularly like it has a watermark on it. Of some description let's just put a bit more fluid in and again uh, G, is that a GVR? You can see there the watermark with a with a crown. I'm going to actually look these watermarks up in the uh, catalogue itself. So these are going to be around the George V era. Yeah. So that's the GVR. It's either the multiple cipher or the simple cipher. So let's have a look at that again. And... GVR and it looks like it's stacked just single like a single row so I would say that that is the simple cipher so that's watermark 100 which is dee 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 so that's the threepence 
was a violet, no, it was more of a brown colour. Maybe it's my eyes are just not. There isn't a threepen brown. So hmm. So simple cipher is a D D five. that. Let me take that out of the so that's a D5 oh yeah I can see that it is violet yeah So I'll put that in, that in there, and we can move on to the next one, which is a nice uh, blue shade of blue there. Well, there's two four penny ones there, different shades. So let's put uh, that one in see what this one reveals and there's definitely some watermark coming through again let's put some more fluid in to give it a chance to soak and Again, quite unclear to my eyes there. Hmm. Not leaping off the paper for me that one. So I'm just going to put that in there. So let's try the next one, which is this other fourpence. And there we go, I can see the now it's a George the Sixth again. So the George the Sixth fourpence dull grey green. Does that fit with yep? Yeah. So that's the fourpence dull grey green. So that's D. Is it the fourpence blue? Yeah, there are two options for that one. Do you see that's that's more of a grey green than a blue, definitely. So that's going to be D31. Right, so let me put those down. That's going to be D31. Sorry about this, my uh, table's a bit of a, a bit of a mess here. This isn't quite how I'd planned it to to lie, but uh, let's keep going with these. We've got now got a five pence, like a yellowish colour, yellowish orange. So let's see what we get for this one. Put a bit more. Fluid in. Again, 
and there are some of these that don't have a watermark so potentially these could be the later Queen Elizabeth ones Sorry, I don't have an answer for that. that's quite alright Alexa shut up <laughs> if only it were that easy just ask Alexa what uh, watermark these were but yeah, no, that one doesn't stand out either, unfortunately. So let's go with the next one, which is a sixpence. Yeah, it seems to be a bit of a dark art, does uh, reading the watermarks on some of these. So, try it both ways up to see what you can see. Again, I can see the, the print from the front kind of coming through, but not anything particularly strong on the watermark front. So these could be, as I say, these could be the Queen Elizabeth stamps so got one here which is a one shilling blue now that one does have a watermark which I can see coming through and that's a G V I R yep definitely that's a George the sixth one shilling blue right so that's another one identified so George the sixth, one shilling. Deep blue is D thirty three. D thirty three. So I'll put that one next to thirty one there. So that's D thirty three. So not not a total uh, disaster trying to. Uh, identify these. I'm gonna give these all another attempt in the future I think. I'll do, probably do that off camera. Um, but you know at least I've managed to get some of these on uh, on camera. So I've got another one shilling value here. This is like an ochre brown. So let's see what we get for that one. Again, sometimes it seems fairly obvious that there's no watermark jumping out. You know, because when, when it does pop, it really does just jump off the stamp at you. So that seems to be another another one that doesn't. So we've got a one shilling ochre. But yeah, there's a couple of opportunities there. That could be a... Yeah, there's a no watermark set there for Queen Elizabeth so that could be very possibly be D74 but yeah nothing leaping off the page for that one or off the stamp should I say so we've got three left got a two and six Which is like a violet colour of some description and again let's see if we can see any anything popping off the stamp again my lighting conditions aren't probably the greatest for this now I'm seeing a crown at the bottom. Don't know if I am. Don't know if my eyes are. Yeah, definitely a crown. Definitely something there. Uh... Yep. That looks like. 
the St Edward's crown which will put that as St Edward's crown two shilling sixpence purple yellow that's a D fifty four Yeah, so that's a that's another one identified. That's a D fifty four, which is a Queen Elizabeth uh, era. So D fifty. I did say fifty four, didn't I? Yeah, D fifty four. So it's a. Grab that one, put that where I've identified it. And then we've got two left. Got another two and six, which is a slightly different shade. Let's see what this one brings us, if anything. That's got a hinge on it, which isn't going to particularly help. So some more fluid in there. Yeah, there's definitely something there. Yeah, I can see that. There's a that's a Tudor crown. I'm just trying to work out what the cipher is on that one. Oh, well, that's a G V R. Or a GVIR. In fact, is it a Tudor crown? Let me see what the options are. Again, I could do a looking at the. It's a GVR, it's that one. That's the block cipher. So that's the block cipher, and that's the. Two shilling purple yellow, that's a D eighteen with a catalogue value of all of one pound seventy five. So that's D eighteen. You know, I didn't pay a lot of money for these uh, stamps at all. It was a, it came on the stock card that you've uh, seen me removing them from. I think it was less than less than ten pounds for that selection. So that leaves me with the final one, which is this five shilling. Again, doesn't look. Uh, that one doesn't look used. Let's see what that uh, gives us. Let me put it in the fluid of mystery. And does that bring us a another watermark? And. Nothing Nothing leaping off the stamp at me there. Just get my magnifier on it. Again I can see the design from the front kind of coming through. But no real discernible watermark. Now, does that tie in with any of these with no watermark? Yeah, there's a five five shilling scarlet, which is a D66. So that's potentially that one. 
Again, I can't see anything. Let's put it on there and see if anything comes of that. Again, I can't see anything particularly popping off that one. But um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give these another opportunity. Probably when I've got some better lighting, maybe do it during daylight. When I've got some natural light coming through the window. See if that helps. But anyway, not a total failure. So out of that stock card there, I've probably identified half of half of the uh, pre-decimal um, postage due stamps. One thing I will do, because I don't think I have actually shown my postage dues. Let me uh, just move this catalogue out of the way and move my scissors. Try not rip my microphone whilst I reach my uh, stop book album. Now these are all mint, never hinged, and these are the decimal um, postage due stamps. So these are the 1970 set, which were in this particular style, this 3D with the tape. Um, wording so they were from 1971 till 82 came in a variety of values there the highest one being the uh, the five pound now these were replaced by something a little bit more stylish in 1982 which was this design here something a bit more contemporary again with the tape wording and again 3, 4, 5, 10, 20, 25, 50 1 pound, 2 pound and 5 pound and that's my uh, landline ringing. I'm just going to let that ring out because nobody ever rings me on my landline. It will probably be some cold call, somebody trying to sell me something. I don't give my landline number to anybody, so there we go. Thank you. Well, there we go. We've got a £5. That's the higher of those values. Again, these are mint never hinged and uh, finally the, the last set that were produced of pulse juice which is probably my favorite uh, from 1994 and these are absolute I think these are an absolutely gorgeous design really bright and vivid there uh, you've got the crown you've got the words to pay there in the bottom right and then the the value of five pence these are again um mint never hinged if you notice these like the matchings and similar they've got the elliptical perforation there at the bottom so yeah there's a set of uh nine of those again going up to the value of five pound but again i think these are absolutely gorgeous 
really striking design even though you, they're a single colour you know just the the effect on the the way they've been coloured with the highlights I think is really nice so yep so that's the postage due stamps so anyway I hope you've enjoyed this today I mean it was a bit of a bit hit and miss with those watermarks um, but that's what you get for trying to do these uh, kind of experiments um, live on the camera but uh, you know we did identify some of those so I can now get those labelled up in my collection and I can revisit the ones that I couldn't find the watermark and either cross reference them and see if they are actually the ones that don't have a watermark or whether it's just something I've missed I just need to pay a little bit more attention to those so thank you for watching if you've enjoyed please give me a like and if you're not already if you'd consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified of any um, future releases now this was supposed to come out over the weekend but I've not been well over the weekend so apologies for the delayed uh, output there will be another video later in the week not sure what that topic will be so I'm not going to commit to anything with that at this moment one th item of news today I received the Isle of Man Darvo Stanley Gibbons Lux album volume 2 for the Isle of Man so that's something that may be being shown and uh, anyway we'll come to that at some point in the future so thank you for watching um, stay safe keep warm and I'll see you in the next one goodbye for now <laughs>